What's going on guys? Today we're at the Eastern Market Brewing Company uh, down in Eastern Market. Yes, we're back again. Uh, the lovely Eastern Market with all the awesome street art. Again, I am joined by my boy, Cliff. And uh, today we're just looking to uh, have another good time, show you the inside of the Eastern Market Brewing Company and tell you exactly why you need to come here. What are you eating? Uh, smoking chili cheese popcorn. Can you tell us a little bit about it. Oh, it's a very unique flavor. It's oh, and, and it's made in Detroit. I didn't know that. So what do we have in there? Mr. Oh, it's called the uh, the uh, the uh, killing beer. How is it so far? Actually, I like it. I, I've never I've never had this before. Like I'm used to the you know the, the good old big name brands. Actually, uh, actually uh. This is like an old Stro Brewing Company boiler actually. So this is where we generate our heat. Um, we can send it all to different parts of the brewery. So like this is where we're able to heat our water and we want to mash in. When we mash in, we take a bunch of different kinds of grains, sometimes we'll take corn or wheat, and we're able to put it in this guy, put the water in about 150 degrees. And so kind of think of it as like we're making a tea, right? We're extracting the natural sugars that are in those different grains. Um, and those sugars are going to be put into matter and the yeast will eat the sugars, creating ethanol with our alcohol and CO2 as well. So, right. with this guy right here, put all the grain in here. He's going to kind of hang out for about an hour. Um, for our size, about, let's see, 150 gallons of liquid. Um, got about a five barrel system. So we'll start in here. And then we're able to, the time is right, pull it down in here, go into our kettle. That's what's kind of happening right now. I've got the control panel here. And so with the kettle, we're going to refine those sugars, kind of condense them, boil them down a little bit, and also purify it, make sure there's nothing bad. And if there is anything bad, it's going to get killed, we boil it off. <laughs> and then during the boils, also when we add our hops, and so people may know like IPAs and everything, much higher hop content. So hops have this thing called alpha acid, which in short, gives us different bitterness, right? So through heat, we're able to extract the alpha acids and then find that balance between the sugars before and um, the hoppiness that you would have in a lot of beer. So 
do that, yeah, so we'll find the we'll find the beer and give us our balance. That is what a good beer is. After it's done boiling, we'll set it down here for a heat exchanger. Heat exchanger is really nice because we're able to pitch our yeast um, immediately at about 70 degrees. So it goes from 212 to 70 degrees. So when we introduce the yeast, the yeast doesn't automatically get killed. But that would be that would be unfortunate. Yeah, we'll send it down here through the line. Fermenter. And so the fermenters are jacketed with glycol so we can control our temperature. Beer likes to ferment at about 70 degrees. So um, when and while it's fermenting, you'll see the we have a like blow-off port over here. And when this is bubbling, we know that the yeast is active because it's, it's giving off CO2, right? Yeah. So the CO2 comes up here and we have a place for it to go because otherwise our tanks would explode and that'd be really bad. <laughs> so it hangs out here for about like a week and do a couple days of fermenting. At 70 degrees, we'll do a couple days of cold crashing where we're going to put it down to about 35. And so all the yeast and all the residual grain and hops are going to drop down to like below this arm. And then when it's time to move up here, We'll pull from this guy and we'll send it to our cold room where it gets carbonated and straight to your glass. So, kind of think of it as like four different kinds of vessels. We have our mash tun where we get the sugar, our kettle where we refine it and kind of introduce our hops and our bitterness, the fermenter where he's going to have those sugars eaten to produce alcohol, and then the cold room where it's going to go chill out and become carbonated and uh, kind of relax for a little bit and then the, all the flavors are going to kind of mellow out become a little more fine, a little more subtle, and then yeah, we'll pour beer for you guys. So like this guy has beer in it, so he's he's in that cold crash stage that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So you see this, you can feel this, it's like pretty cold. So the beer in there is it's chilled, and we have the glycol is running all of it down. That's what that's what this is. So you have like a glycol in, and glycol out. So we literally have an air conditioner up on the roof that's specifically for the glycol. We can control our temperature. It's a good job. So, yeah, it is. It's a lot of, a lot of technology. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah, it's like all about learning your system and understanding like what works well and what doesn't work well, and kind of like actually um, working towards your strengths, right? So we know that like we can make hobby beers really well, we can make dark beers really well, and like, we are making something that uh, we are making something that we don't know too much about. We're gonna document everything and make sure next time we can improve or not improve, however you want to do it. So. <laughs> Here too, like, a little messy right now, sorry. Yeah, we have two James, Detroit City Distillery Barrels as well.